The anointed preaching of God's word is a lot like chocolate syrup. You just can't help but pour it on. Tony Broom Ministries now brings you the following sermon entitled, The Sons of God. Oh, it's such a wonderful opportunity to be together today to talk about something that is so elated and so high, I just don't have the words to express just how I feel about this subject today. The sons of God. There are two phrases, the Son of God and the sons of God. There's only one Son of God, Jesus. That's why he is called the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. John chapter 1, verse 14. And his only begotten Son, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. While there is only one Son of God, there are many sons of God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10 teaches that God has great desire and pleasure in bringing many sons unto glory. Now as humans, we still have gender, so we say sons and daughters. But actually in the kingdom of God, it goes beyond gender and sexuality and is therefore known as children. The word is pronounced techna. You go get the techna shot. We need to take a shot against the devil so we'll stand up for God. Techna. The word is techna. It's children or sons of God. The term sons of God refers to relationship. It has nothing to do with race or gender. We proudly call ourselves servants of God. And what a joy it is to serve God. We are glad to say that we're servants of God. But Paul informs us in Galatians chapter 4 that the servant is under governors and tutors. Yes. Even though he may be Lord of all, he's a child and he doesn't know what he's doing. That's the way I was when I got saved. When I got saved, I was just as born again. I was just as saved then as I am now or ever will be. I think somebody might need to hear that again. When I got saved, I was just as saved then as I am now or will ever be. But when I got saved, even though I was just as saved then as I am now, I didn't know what I was doing then. So I had to be under governors and tutors. The servant has to be told what to do all the time. When you have a job and you are constantly having to be told what to do, There are two things that's happening. One is you're unsure of yourself, or the other one is you just don't want to work to start with. So you have to be told what to do all the time. That's the way many Christians are. They have to be told what to do all the time. And then when you tell them what to do all the time, they get mad because somebody's telling them what to do all the time. (laughs) I don't want nobody to tell me what to do all the time. But nobody spoke to me. Nobody shook my hand. But I don't want nobody to bother me. So there you go. Can't please us in a toad sack, can you? The servant has to be told what to do and is ruled by the rudiments and elements of this world. That's the way we were when we were children. But God sent forth His Son into the world to redeem those who were under the law. And verse 4 says that we are adopted as sons. Even though we were children, we were under the rudiments and elements of this world. We are now adopted as sons. We're in a royal family now. We have royal blood running through our veins now. Lord have mercy. We are sons of God. It may not feel like it. We may not walk like it. We may not talk like it. We may not live like it half the time. But we are sons of God. Just to know that today will cause you to leave here different than you came in Jesus' name. We are adopted as sons. And verses 6 and 7 says that because ye are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. The Spirit of His Son is better known to us perhaps as the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, 
crying, Abba, Father. Amen. When you come to Christ and you're born again, the Spirit of God comes into your life and you're born again. You may not be filled with the Holy Spirit at that time, but you are born again and you keep on walking with Christ and you keep on talking with Christ. And before you know it, you're sanctified. You claim Him as Lord. And before you know it, you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and you speak with other tongues and you have power to live the Christian life. So just because you don't start out in full force, you keep on going. And before you know it, the Spirit of God will, as Jesus said, come upon you and you will be witnesses unto Him in all the earth. Amen. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba. That word is Abba, Daddy, God, Father. And we worship Him that way. Abba, Father. I love you, Father. You're my Heavenly Father. And if you haven't told Him lately just how much you love Him and just how much of a Father He is to you and that you want to be with Him and you want to walk with Him and talk with Him and even though you don't ask Him for anything all the time, you just want to be with Him and you're just glad to be His son. You're just glad to be His daughter. You're just glad to be His kid. You're just glad to be in the family of God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant. And we might say it like this. We are not servants. We're sons who serve. Thou art no more a servant. We could say it like this. You're not just a servant. Now, we know that we're servants of God. But Paul is saying, you're no more a servant. That is, you're not just a servant anymore. But you're a son. And if you're a son, then you're an heir of God through Christ. Amen. That means that I am an heir of God. That means that I have everything that God has through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If I want to get any blessing from God, it has to come through Christ. Amen. And if it doesn't come through Christ, it's not coming the right way. Amen. I am an heir of God through Christ. That means that everything that belongs to Christ belongs to me. But it doesn't belong to me exclusively. Right. It belongs to me and it also belongs to thee. Amen. Because see, if it only belongs to me, then I am an elite. Right. I am a high class. Right. I'm somebody up here that nobody else can get to. Right. I'm somebody who sits in a special room. And you, just because my name is Broom, that don't mean I'm sitting in a special room. If you sit in this special room, they have to slip juice through the hole to you because you don't want to do nothing to disturb the anointing. We don't got this man-made religion. If your anointing ain't no stronger than that, that you've got to slip juice and slices of orange through the hole so you can't disturb the anointing. If your anointing ain't no stronger than that, you need to get a stronger anointing. The anointing I'm talking about don't have to be held into a curtain. It doesn't have to be held into a hole in a wall. You're not just a servant, but you're a son. You're an heir of God through Christ. Every born-again person is a son of God. That is something that this world, especially the church world, needs to know. Every born-again person is a son of God. Amen. It's not something that you have to climb up to. It's not something that you have to merit or try to achieve. We work for God. We love God. and We do what we can for God. But it's not to merit His favor. When you come into His family, you already got His favor. Amen. Every born-again person that's a child of God... John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power, exousia, authority, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. When you believe on the name of Jesus Christ, he adopts you into his family, and you are a born-again child of God. You are a son of God. Every son of God is led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. We say so many times, well, I just don't know whether I'm being led or not. I don't know if the Spirit's leading me to do this. I don't know if the Spirit's leading me to do that. If you're a son of God, you're led by the Spirit of God. Amen. You may not know whether it's every little thing that you do, but the biggest thing is to do something. 
We sit around and wait and see if God is leading me to do thus and so. And while we sit around and wait to see if God is leading us to do thus and so, we do no, no, no. But if we would just go ahead and do something, even if we make a mess, God is able to straighten the mess up. God would rather clean the baby up behind the curtain rather than have the baby who couldn't do nothing. He'd rather clean us up when we make a mess because we're trying to do something for the Lord. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. A lot of times we say, I don't know if the Lord is leading me just because we don't want to do certain things. So I'm waiting to see if He's leading me or not. The Lord is leading you. If you are a son of God, He is leading you. Every son of God is a manifestation to this generation. Verse 19 of Romans 8, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. How powerfully our lead pastor Sunday talked about the fact that we, yes, we have a wonderful church, and yes, we have a wonderful doctrine, and yes, we love the Holy Spirit, but we need to get out of the four walls of the church and take the kingdom to the world for Jesus Christ, reaching this world for Jesus Christ. The earnest expectation of the creature. They're waiting and they're crying and they're dying and they're travailing and saying, somebody come and help me. They may not ever tell you that. In fact, they'll tell you they don't want your help. But actually, they do want your help. They need your help. They need the manifestation of the sons of God. This world, this creation, is crying out in travail and sorrow. And troubles are coming in. And Washington doesn't know what to do. They can't even come to an agreement on how to seal the ceiling of the money that we owe. So much money now that we don't know what to do with. And they don't know what to do. But I can tell you that God has the answer for this world. The kingdom of God is coming near. If we know what open our hearts, we can go out to this world. And this world say, what are you doing? And I'm just saying, I'm just bringing the kingdom of God to you. The kingdom of God is coming near to you. Jesus said, go into the cities. He said, heal the sick that are therein. And while you're doing it, when they're wondering about the things you're doing, just say, it's not me. It's just the kingdom of God has come near to you. Oh, glory to God. Glory, hallelujah. The earnest expectation of the creature is waiting and crying out for the manifestation of the sons of God. This world needs to see the manifestation of the sons of God. So sick and tired of the church sitting around waiting for people to pamper them and waiting for people to give them a free gift. Come on in. We'll give you a free gift. We'll give you a foot massage. Fully do it on all that stuff. Come on in and get right with God and help us to go out and reach the world for Jesus Christ. Every son of God has God in them. Do you realize as a son of God, a daughter of God, you got God in you? John G. Lake used to get up every morning and he would look in the mirror and he said, God in the mirror is a man in this suit. Here's a suit with a man in it and God is in this man in this suit. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Well, I thought you said a while ago that lead pastor and you were talking about going out and reaching the world and now you're saying come out. You've got to come out to start with. And where you can get saved and get right with God and get sanctified, and then you go out and touch the world for Jesus Christ. Amen. Come out and be separate. That's why we can't go out, because sometimes we haven't come out. There you, go. Amen. you can't go out unless you have come out. You've you got to come out to start with. Be that ecclesia, the called out. You've got to be called out, and you've got to come out, and then you can go out. Come out from among them and be you separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Amen. Every son of God has God in them. No wonder we can sing, He walks with me and He talks with me and He tells me that I'm His very own. Because we got God walking and talking with us. When we go to the restaurant, we could say that God is in that restaurant because we're there and we represent God. We're a son of God. Amen. 
when we go into the department store. We can say God is in that store because we are there and we represented God. Amen. Every son of God is a torch for God in this dark world. Amen. We're living in a dark world. Yeah. A troublesome, painful world. Yeah. A troubled world filled with hate and violence on every hand. This is a dark world. But every son of God is a torch that lights this dark world. Yeah. Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 through the first part of verse 16. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Uh oh. That's part of the problem right there. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Because when you murmur and dispute, you're taking away from the kingdom of God. You're taking away from the sonship relationship. Do all things without murmurings and disputings that you may be blameless and harmless. When you murmur and dispute, you're using that time to fight each other instead of heal the sick and set the captive free. There you go. Amen. And God wants us to be blameless and harmless. Jesus said, be wise like serpents and be harmless like doves. The sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. I know he's talking about America now. Amen. In the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. This is Bible. Yep. Among whom you shine as lights, torches in the world. Amen. Holding forth the word of life. Amen. As a son of God, as a daughter of God, you are a torch holding forth the word of God to this generation. Amen. Every son of God is dealt with through discipline. Amen. Every son of God has had the hickory put to their spiritual anatomy at some time or another. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 5. Ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. I'm glad he calls me my son. Amen. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Amen. You always heard your daddy and mama say, this has hurt me a whole lot worse sir, than it is you. Uh -huh. Charles Sr. told me I could say worse sir, in the pulpit, by the way. <laughs> whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Amen. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. Amen. If you don't want to put up with what the Father's trying to do with you and you can't deal with being disciplined, you're proving your relationship or lack thereof. Right. Lord have mercy. Right. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? Right. But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then the Bible, believe it or not, has some bad words in it. Here's one. Then are you bastards and not sons. Uh -huh. If you haven't been disciplined by the Father, you're not one of His. Right. Every son of God, every daughter of God, has had times in their Christian life when they have had to be disciplined. Right. Now, it may not be, he says, chastening, but that doesn't always mean a spanking. Right. Now, when you and I were coming up, I realized that a lot of times that did mean a spanking. We had worse than whipping. We have whooping. Now, if you got a whooping, you really got your attention. But they don't whoop their children anymore. They take their tablet away. They take their iPhone and Game Boy. They take their Xbox away. Xbox. The only Xbox we knew about had X lax in it. There ain't no way Xbox. The sons of God. Every son of God has discipline in their life. They have experienced discipline from the Father. Yeah. And you might say, well, you got the Holy Spirit. Everything is all right. It must not be. Paul wrote to many people who had the Holy Spirit and they still had problems. Yeah. We have the Holy Spirit, but that doesn't mean we're perfect. Yeah. We still have problems. If somebody told you once you have the Holy Ghost, you ain't going to ever have no more problems, don't give them your money. I'll be glad to use it for the Lord's service. Thank you. Amen. You do have problems. 
He wrote to the Corinthians, they had problems. He wrote to the Ephesians, they had problems. You on and on you could go. Every son experiences discipline because we don't do what's right all the time. And we fall short. And God deals with us. He doesn't deal with us in hate or anger. He deals with us in love. And sometimes it doesn't feel too good. And when you have a relationship with God, you're quick to get that thing right. Every son of God has relationship with God. This is what sonship is all about. It is a relationship. We're not talking about no religion. Jesus didn't come down here to start no religion. He came down here to bring salvation. The world was already full of religion. Even the Jews had a bunch of religion. Moses went up on the mountain. And they said, we'll show you what religion is. Make us a God to go before us. These are thy gods, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. The golden calf, that's religion. But Jesus Christ is salvation. He came to bring salvation. Every son of God has relationship with God. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 30 describes the sons of God relationship better than anything in the world. We are members of His body, of His flesh, and of His bones. And that's about as tight as you can get. We have relationship with Jesus Christ. We're members of His body. We're part of His body. We're part of His flesh. We're part of His bones. 1 John 3, 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed, some Bible say lavished, upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Amen. Just to be called a son of God. Wow. I told the Lord the other day, I said, I don't feel right. Because there was a time in this thing about religion, not just religion, but the Old Testament, covenant, even the Old Covenant. There was a time when people who couldn't see were not allowed into the house of God. They couldn't come into the temple. They couldn't come. There were people of different nationalities. They were not welcome into the temple because of their past things that they had done. If God kept us out of the temple today because of past things that we had done, none of us would be here. We'd be in an empty house. You wouldn't even have a preacher. Thank God for the new covenant. Thank God for the blood of Christ. Sonship says, yeah, you may be blind, but if you come, you can be not only forgiven, but if, if sight's a problem, I can fix that too. If lameness is a problem, I can fix that too. If deafness is a problem, I can fix that too. As the old Englishman said, eh? What did you say? If muteness, dumbness is a problem, I can fix that too. God fixes whatever problem that keeps us away from being a son of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew Him not. The world identifies with us the same way that it did with Him. Don't expect the world to roll out the red carpet to you when they crucified Him and put Him on the cross. If you're a son of God... They're going to treat you like they treated the Son of God. The Son of God was crucified and died. And a Son of God cannot be expected to be treated with a Rolls Royce and a big watch in this world. Beloved, now, not just sweet by and by, pie and pie in the sky when you die, but now, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. We don't understand all of that yet. We got enough to know to get us there. I don't know everything, but I do know the streets of gold. I know the walls of jasper. I know the gates of pearl. I know there's a throne. I know there's a rainbow about that throne. I know there are elders there. There are saints there. There are living creatures. I know that our loved ones there are with Jesus. That's enough I need to know to get me on the other side. We don't know all of it. We don't know what we shall be yet. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. When He comes in that glorified body to get us, we'll be just like Him. We'll rise from this earth in our glorified body. We'll rise from that grave in our glorified body. We'll be like Him. And chapter 4 verse 17 of 1 John says, As He is. So are we in this world. Amen. You know what that means? That means that as He is, so are we. Yeah. The only Jesus in this world now is us. Amen. 
Oh my goodness. Help Tony to be a better Christian this day, if that's the case. As he is, so are we in this world. We represent him. If we are sons of God, that it means that we represent God. There is no higher position in the kingdom of God than the sons of God. No higher position. You say, well, what about apostle? What about prophet? What about evangelist? All of those are offices. All of those are offices. They're not positions. That's what men have gotten in trouble. They thought it was a position. So they wanted to keep a hold to it. God never meant it to be a position. He meant it to be an office. He can put you in an office and He can set some in order in the church. First apostle, secondarily prophet, thirdly evangelist, and then the gifts and all that. But all of us, it doesn't matter whether you're an apostle. It doesn't matter whether you're a prophet. It doesn't matter whether you're a doorkeeper. All of us are sons of God. And there's no higher position that you can attain to than a son of God. Even when you're glorified with Him in glory, you'll never be anything more than a son of God. And who would want to be? We'll never be divine, but we'll be glorified. Now we're physical and spiritual sons of God. And one day we'll be glorified as sons of God to live with Him forever. Let's give the Lord some praise this morning. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in this place today. Lord, we thank you that we can come together. We thank you for the Word of God that causes us to rejoice because we are sons of God. We're sons of the Most High God. We thank you, Lord, for that. Help us to rise to that position and quit living beneath our privilege and start living like who we are in Jesus Christ. Not that we're somebody in ourselves, but we're sons and daughters of the Most High God. Let us live like it. Let us walk like it. Let us talk like it. Let us be like it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are you one of the sons of God? Do not stand in doubt about it any longer. Make sure that you know Jesus Christ as your Savior and have received Him as your Lord. You'll know that you're one of His, and no one can convince you otherwise. The sons of God, has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.